Finder Summit week five with Vin Kennedy and Caleb Dressel. Um, Wi-Fi just went out, so we're back on. Uh, yeah, we're excited to have them on today um, as our halfway point for Finder Summit season one. Here we go. Let's add Ben into the chat. Here he comes, maybe. Hello. Hello. Hey, Olivia. Can you What's see me like this? Or is this OK? Can I do Whatever. this? Whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that sideways. All right. Sideways. Can we just hold it? How about this? Hey, Olivia. Hey. How's it going, guys? Good. This is my friend, Caleb. Caleb, this is Olivia. Hey, Olivia. Thanks for coming on the show. You're um, welcome. Let me turn you up real fast. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm having some technology adjustments, too. Cool. Um, I was just telling everyone who's not obsessed with swimming that Caleb, um, world record holder, Olympian, super cool, Ben, uh, current law student, and retired swimmer. Pretty high, dude. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for hyping me up like that. Yeah. <laughs> <Appreciate> it. <laughs> um, but yeah, also podcast extraordinaires. They got their own show these days. Um, yeah. Makes me laugh really hard. I listen to it while I'm running. Okay. And so I'm like running down the street and just like laughing to myself. Like, Dang. You run? That's awesome. <sighs> Gotta stay fit somehow. Retired swim life. Um, uh, that's the only reason I swim is to stay in shape. Yeah. <laughs> that's literally okay. the only reason so, I did. So. <laughs> it's the only reason I quit swimming. Um, okay. So as I was saying, both UF alums. Um, well, one of us. One yeah. of us are UF alums. Shut up. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I haven't graduated. Yeah, well, you went to UF, okay? And then, yeah. you know, followed. He's still trying to. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So my first question is, can you guys give a brief background on your relationship and how you guys first met? A couple. Yeah. You want to go? Yeah, sure. I'll tell it. Um, so let's see. First day on campus... What was the date? August 20th. Maybe. August 20th. Gosh, I hate that you remember and I don't. Uh, <laughs> it was like the first week, it was like new student orientation or whatever week. And uh, we got to campus and let's see, I was walking through the parking garage, right? And you were like, hey, like, you want to ride to where the dorms? And I was like, I mean, no, I my mom asked, asked you for a ride. I think that's what it was. Oh, your mom did. Yeah. But I didn't know who he was, so we gave him a ride, and then that, that was the first spark. And then ever since then, we've just been, just been hanging, just yeah. been hanging out. Yeah, we've literally Slick. hung out ever since then. <laughs> no, it was, I mean, it was ever since day one, and then from then, that, that was like the first person I knew coming into college, and the first person I knew on the team, so I just remembered the name Ben. And then after that, I mean, of course, you start clicking with guys, but I mean, Ben's been around for, since like year six now, so started off that faith, that, that, that fateful day. That fateful day of August 20th. <laughs> Started strong. Still, 2014. Uh, yeah, 2014, yeah. That was, beautiful, yeah. Wow, that was a while ago. Um, cool. Well, what's a, li a day in the life look like these days? Now that, you know, then I guess you're taking classes online, I would guess. Slash uh, summer uh, off. Yeah. Is that Ross? Sorry, Ross. we just saw one of our old teammates is on. What's up, Ross? <laughs> hey, Ross. Uh... Let's see. Yeah, I am in online, but the I'm not in school right now, so I'm, I'm just interning. And low-key, I have my computer right next to me um, in case it goes inactive and I have to move the mouse so it doesn't look like I'm inactive. It's the most boring-looking screen I've yeah. ever seen in my life. Um, but that's pretty much all I do right now. He's got a lot more interesting stuff going on other than, you know, like tracking laws and stuff like that well but uh caleb you're training for competition that like isn't necessarily happening anytime soon yeah yeah, yeah so how does that go it's more of a it's more of a mental game than anything um i mean just because preparing right now i'm preparing for something that's a, a year off which usually for me since like the age of 12 it's train for a couple months, taper, rest, and then have a big meet, and then take, you know, two, two week vacation, and then start the cycle over. So it was the first year in a very long time for me that I haven't had that normal yearly routine. So it has been a little tough. 
I've definitely gotten mentally fried at times because it's it's like what am I what am I doing at this point? You know, I have a I have a very long time, so I'm just trying to stay as fresh as I can with my routine. Um, but I'm still training right now. It's just I'm trying to keep things in in perspective the best I can and just not trying to overdo anything. Um, what was your initial reaction when the Olympics got postponed? I I understood it. I mean, I wasn't upset. I there's there's more to my life than just swimming. I mean, I was ready to go this year. I would have been ready. I was having great training. I was very confident in what I've been doing in the pool, you know, training wise, talking with coach Troy and, you know, um, competing with my teammates in practice. So I didn't look at it. I think there's, there's two sides to, to all this. It, it's not good. It's not bad. It's just whatever perspective you want to take on the matter. Um, I chose to look at it in a different light and, you know, there's plenty of ways to get better. And I just have a, another year to do that, which I'm, I'm sure You've heard that. I know it's a very cliche thing to say, but when yeah. you're actually doing things to get better during this time, it, it's, a, it's a very realistic thing that can happen. It's just, it's the mindset that you take on the situation. Um, you said you were getting mentally fried a lot, which I totally understand when there's no like actual, like recent goal to be working towards. Um, how do you deal with those days where you just like really do not want to get in the pool? It is tough. I mean, it helps talking with Coach Troy. Uh, you know, this is my fifth, no, sixth year working with him. So it's gotten easier to communicate and, you know, just walk up and be like, hey, I'm super tired right now. I, I hate swimming at the moment. Um, so I'm, I'm very thankful I have a coach who understands that. And sometimes the biggest problem for me is just being able to vocalize things and not necessarily make changes. Um, yeah. And some, some days I need to take a Saturday off or actually – this year, I went to Disney World with, with Ben, uh, my fiance, and Ben's fiance. Um, I, I took Saturday off and went to Disney World. That was the break that I needed because I was just completely fried. That was in February. So Troy understands. He knows I'm not a big softie. He understands, like, when I'm really fried that, you know, maybe I need a day off, um, you know, forget about swimming for a little bit. So working with Troy for that long, he understands how I work. And communication is big for me, but most of which it's just vocalizing I'm really tired and I need to not think about swimming for a little bit. Yeah, I think finding that balance is super important in any sport. Um, I was going to say my last question kind of around this. Do you guys, then when you were swimming, Caleb, now, do you guys ever feel like you were like missing out on things when you were like putting all that time into the sport? I mean, yeah, like, I don't know. I think everybody goes through that. Like, yeah, with anything that you're fully committed to you're always going to feel like um you know the grass is always greener on the other side it's like you know even if you're not a swimmer you know you could be doing something else and uh if you're fully invested in that it's it's hard to really sometimes when you're in the moment think about kind of what the end goal is but um i mean it's, it's obviously all worth it in the end hopefully <laughs> yeah I mean, yeah you went through it too it's it's uh yeah just a matter of perspective i guess yeah i mean even in high school like thinking about the things you have to sacrifice but i think i think anything that you're like ben's anything you're committed to it's it's gonna happen um so it, you do have the thoughts that you know wander around your head of frick maybe i do want to maybe i do want to go downtown on a wednesday night but you can't yeah. or maybe i do want to go to you know even in high school this football game that i can't go to like, we lost them um, Oh, sorry it does it does wear on you a little bit but i think in the end you know sacrifice now at a young age and then when you're older smooth sailing so that's kind of the mindset i have and it is a little tough because you know you feel like you're in your prime you feel like you're kind of running things a little bit but it'll have to hold off i guess until done swimming or when we're older i think at the end of the day as long as you enjoy what you're doing you said you said the other day uh to achieve greatness, you have to be obsessed with your craft. I actually liked that comment in one of your podcasts. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I like swimming. I enjoy the time I have with my teammates. It's not like I am just hating life. Like, I love what I do. I love the people I do it with. So, I mean, it's, again, it's, it, Ben's right. It's, it's perspective. Like, yeah, I could be doing other things, but it's not going to get me anywhere. And I'll just enjoy the people I'm around right now. So, I mean, I like what I do. Yeah. All right, Ben, I got a question for you. As an athlete, it's easy to constantly have clear-cut goals um, and, like, benchmarks that you're working towards. But then, like, when you quit your sport that your whole world has revolved around for so long, um, it can be kind of identity-crushing. Um, how 
have you like reshaped your goals since you quit swimming and like what are you focusing on these days well first of all i want to point out that you did use the correct word there quit um it wasn't a retirement it was quitting for sure uh, <laughs> i just want to make that point out. um but yeah it, it it is funny it's um it's a it is a big adjustment like you know transitioning from something that is seems very concrete like um you have a goal you you swim and you you know that's what that's the time you want or this is the place you want to get or the meet you want to get to um so it, it's a little bit different especially for somebody who you know did that their whole life um to like completely shift your focus on something way different it is interesting but one of the things that i mean we talk about on on our podcast a lot is like you know swimming is just swimming but you there's so many different things that you can relate it to i mean it's it's not necessarily how you do one thing it's apply the same principles to kind of your whole life so it's i don't know it's it's interesting because some of the things i learned in swimming or a lot of the things i learned in swimming kind of have translated well to what i'm doing now and so i mean it like like you said i mean it sounds a little bit cliche but you know you you learn a lot of really cool things and you learn a lot of i don't know i guess just like the standard things you would think about makes a good swimmer it's like you know those things can take you far in a lot of other things so it really hasn't been that difficult of a transition it's just been kind of learning how to translate those things well that was worth it you were that nice i know dude i'm so that was yeah, really good. I'm very good at that. Yeah, that was a great it's, it's question. True, that was a really good question. Yeah. That was good. I have no real world value. I just swim. So great, great question. <laughs> um, okay. I got a question kind of about like influences. We like to ask the people that come on the show, like that inspire us, who inspires them. Um, let's just start general. Uh, who would you guys consider to have had the greatest impact on your lives? Be it like your families, coaches, fiancés, et cetera. My mom and my dad, easily. Definitely my mom and my dad. I look up to them so much for different things. Like they have very different personalities. Um, and I've learned a lot just watching my mom and dad, even from a young age, carrying up. And then my my, my siblings, um, again, there's very different things I've learned from everyone in my family. Uh, and they're all great people. I know I'm going to be biased, of course, but I mean, they're all very purposeful in what they do. And I think they're living out what they're meant to be doing. So it's very cool to see that, especially within my own family, to like be able to look up to all my siblings, even my younger sister. Um, but especially for my parents for creating that, you know, open mindset of go out and do something go out and do what you're meant to be doing in life. Um, so it's cool to see that come full circle because we're at the age where we all have jobs at this point. Uh, we're all pretty much on our own. So it's very cool to watch that come full circle when like these are the people I grew up with, like sharing a bathroom, fighting over like who gets to use the toilet when we get home and then watching them like go out and do what they're supposed to be doing. So my mom and my dad. Yeah, I, not to be repetitive, but I was going to say the same thing. There was, I, I'm not a big quote guy like he is. Like he remembers so many quotes, but um one of the things not necessarily a quote but one of the things my parents told me early on as a kid was um you know you you are a lot more influential than you think and and oh, the more i think so. about it it's not so much necessarily like you know you're so great and everybody lo looks up to you it's not necessarily that it's just you know it applies to anybody else. people are always watching you and people are always seeing what you want and seeing what other people are doing and you know, it goes a long way to be a good influence and it goes a long way to do your best because, I mean, that shows integrity and, um, you know, it, it only helps people around you and it helps yourself if you, um, you know, are doing the very best you can. So I would say, yeah, my parents, they, they taught me things like that and uh, they've really stuck with me. And then um, I'll give my fiance a shout out as well because she's trying to call me so many times right now. I don't know if she's watching this, but... Uh, that's the reason why it keeps cutting in and out. But she's also another one who's like, I mean, I've been with her for five years now and uh, almost five years, I guess. And it's, and, I mean, it, it matures you and it teaches you a lot of things about yourself and the other person. And uh, it definitely wouldn't be the man I am today without her. 
so. Sweet. Um, yeah, I like that idea that, like, you know, you influence everyone, too. That kind of goes hand in hand with, like, the idea of, like, treat everyone with kindness and that sort of idea. Um, about coaches, though, I think I like talking to athletes because – um, about inspirational figures, because I feel like we're kind of like oftentimes pretty strongly bonded to our coaches. Um, is there any line or specific conversation that you've had with a coach that still stands out with you today? I, one of my favorite quotes from Troy, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot that I can't say on the show or else <laughs> it would just, your account would be banned forever. <laughs> one of my favorites is, um, Troy said in a team meeting, I believe it was freshman or sophomore year. He goes, guys, if there's an easier way, let me know what it is, and I'm not going to do it that way. <laughs> so I think – and then, of course, I mean, I overthink every quote or anything you know someone says to me. Um, I, I think he was just not only referring to swimming, but there's there's no shortcuts in anything you do. Um, if there is some – you know, you, you see all the ads on TV, the 20-minute 20 20 minute abs, or, like, you only have to run for five minutes. No, if you want to get good at something – you do it over and over and over again, and you do it over and over and over again really, really well. And that's where you see results. There's no shortcuts in anything you do, and then there's no magic pill. There's no food you can take that's going to make you swim fast. To get good at something, you practice being good at it, and you do that a lot of times. It's really quite simple. It's not easy. It's, a, it's, a, it's an easy concept to grasp, but actually doing it is the hard part. So that was one of my favorite Troy quotes, one of which is actually appropriate to share with you. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's – I mean, that's got to be up there for me. He, I don't know that I have a specific quote, but he, we talked about this recently. When I came on the recruiting trip, um, I, one of the things I remember most, I have a horrible memory, so like, I don't remember a lot of things, but uh, I remember the feeling of being in his office and you know, I wasn't necessarily the best recruiter or anything, but um, he took an interest in me, I think, because of the person, because of my personality a lot, and uh, he, he saw that I you know had had room to grow and I had a good character and everything. But anyways, one of the one of the things I, I remember most about it is he he sat me down and he's basically like, well, uh, you know, if you want to come here, that's great, but like you're gonna work really hard, and uh, you know, if, if you're not cut out for it, then don't come here. And uh, yeah, he did that. He did that crap to me too. He basically was like, yeah, you don't want to come here. It's too hard. And you're like, oh yeah, yeah. So that I mean, I don't know if that necessarily is something that's like uh, influenced me in a certain way, but it's something I really remember. And uh, I don't know. I just think that's cool. I don't think that's a lot of things. I don't think that's something, uh, unless I'm mistaken, that a lot of people would say to you on a recruiting trip. It's it's uh, pretty rare and. And I think yeah. that's one of the things. That's such a good coach. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, that's bitch. one of the things that makes him a really good coach. Um, you know, he does it the same way, and uh, it's worked for him. So. Yeah, it's a good recruiting track tactic. Just set up the challenge and be like, come here or don't. Um, yeah. <laughs> and you know what's funny is my, my dad told me um, – my dad swam at UF as well, like, way back in the day. And he told me <laughs> – his coach um, before, I think it was one or two before Troy, basically told him the same thing. He was like, you know, don't come here. You don't have to, but uh, you're going to be really good if you if you do. And, uh, you know, you're not going to ever work as hard as you will here or something. So I was like, dang, yeah, that's that, kind of funny. I've seen teammates, you know, I mean, we've had teammates quit. And it, it's always yeah. the ones that don't completely buy into the, the you know, the, the message that Troy is pitching of, you know, work hard and you're going to see results. But a lot of people couldn't buy into that because Florida's not an easy program. Um, you know, I mean, a lot of programs aren't, but I know for a fact Florida isn't. I know some of the sets that I've done, some of the sets that Troy has written for us, just other programs don't do, um, you know, especially as consistent as Troy does them. So he, he definitely upholds a standard that you want to be a part of and you want to buy into, but the people that don't, they just don't make it. So I think anything you buy into, you want to be 100% in or – you're not going to be in at all. And that's the guys that didn't make it. I think that fits in well with our finder summit saying that we have here, which is kind of the theme of the show. Like the idea that like pursue what you get fulfillment out of and give it 100%, like fully commit to whatever you're doing. And that's how you're going to find success. Um, it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, my favorite. Or are you going to, I was just about to say, what? No, it's not necessarily a quote. Oh, oh, you uh, say it first. I, don't know. I was going to say, so this is kind of from my dad, and then I, I added on to it. 
Um, I think there's, there's three, there's three roles to success. Um, find what you enjoy, have the drive to get better at it, and then try to be in the best, try to be the best in the world at it. And I don't care what that profession is. It might be a, a law student. It might be a swimmer. You could be driving um, race cars. You could be, I don't know, doctor, anything, a school teacher, whatever it is, enjoy what you do, have the drive to get better, and then try to be the best in the world at it. And I think that's how you find success. I think it's as simple as that. What do you guys consider to be your greatest achievements? Oh, wow. Yeah. I, and Yeah. I feel I have become very open-minded um, the more I've matured. And I feel like I've matured in a way that I haven't lost my youthfulness. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just at a point to where I've, I've learned, I, I feel like I've had a very open mind and I've, I've kept that learning mindset um, always available, even at age you know, 23. And I think that's very, very important. So I'm proud of myself in that aspect of, you know, just seeing that there's a lot of beautiful people out there. There's a lot of beautiful things in the world to experience and having an open mind, I think definitely helped me a lot with that. The places I've gotten to travel to the teammates I've, I've met from other countries with different religious beliefs or anything, you know, it, it's just nice to accept people for being a nice person rather than, Oh, what do you believe in? What are your political views? Um, what's your religion? What's your, your sexuality? Like anything like that. It doesn't matter. It's just about being a nice person and contributing to the good of society. And I feel like at my age, I've, I've, um, it's definitely been a work in progress, but um, I feel like that's my greatest achievement is just continuing that, that quest for knowledge and wisdom. Cool. Um, I, I would say mine is, uh, is, is getting engaged. I don't, I never thought that somebody would actually like me enough to do that. I, I didn't, I didn't want to, I, I was thinking, I was like, man, what is my greatest achievement? I haven't achieved a lot, but that's one thing when I'm like, wow, like I really, somebody actually, actually likes me that much. So, I mean, that's, yeah, that didn't have anything to do with you really. No, it yeah. really doesn't have anything to do with me. I guess it's a reflection of maybe like, that sucks for Paige. Though. I was nice to yeah. at least one person and I hate to, uh, to harp on, on that this whole episode, but holy cow, man, like. Then. That, no, that is pretty cool. Yeah, I achieve something great. Like someone wants to spend the rest of your life with you. Yeah. That is unfortunate. Because if that didn't happen, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, we might just be roommates. Well, me and Ben talked about like just like not getting married, just living together for the rest of our lives. Like before we were engaged or anything, like just hanging out. You know, yeah. we've yeah. been doing it for like six years. Why? Why stop there? Let's just go ninety years of just hanging out. You That's know? what I'm saying. I mean, it's an option, but. I don't know. It's, it's, you not, don't, it's not the first option. Don't move in with Paige or Megan. We just, we still, we room together. My partners. Yeah. yeah. Bring, bring them in. All four live together. There you um, go. That's true. <laughs> uh, okay, I want to talk about your uh, your podcast, your talk show. Um, whose idea was the Ben and Caleb show? It, I'm, I'm going to give him credit for this. It was his idea, but I will say that when he told it to me, I, I had thought of the same thing. I just hadn't said anything about it, but um, he, we, it was totally his idea. And he walked in my room one day, he's like, hey, I think I'm gonna start a podcast. And I was like, I mean, I wanna do that too. Yeah. <laughs> it was um, a mutual, I was just the first one to like, actually like physically speak it into existence yeah. but we're on i mean it was a mutual agreement because when i pitched it in his room it was like a five second conversation like yo you want to do a podcast yeah okay and yeah. then and then we started the planning and then it's definitely still developing but it's yeah it was it was mutual and like we we admittedly started without any planning and like, yeah i think you could probably <laughs> tell if you just look at the the progression of the episodes because like I mean, we've been leveling up, like, a oh, little yeah. bit. Evolving. Not necessarily with, like, quality, but with what, <laughs> I guess, what the, uh, what the surroundings are, you could say. We've been leveling up in the, that way. The aesthetics. Uh, we've, we've kept the same plan of we don't want, like, anything set in stone with what we're going to talk about. We want what's on, like, I mean, there's a lot of things that go through my mind. Like, I'm a little bit weird. And I'll write stuff down that I'm thinking about and then basically pitch these idea to Ben or Ben's been thinking about something or something that can help other people or just 
basically speak what's on my mind. It's kind of nice. It's also like a ongoing journal session. So maybe when I'm like older, I can look back on episode one and, and see how I've maybe grown, developed what I was thinking about then and stuff like that. So it, it'll be really cool. I think for me and Ben to be able to look back on these things as well as just kind of share what's, what's on our mind. And we don't get, we don't get too political. It's basically just, if you want to have a good time, come check it out. Yeah. Except next week, we're only talking about only politics. politics. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um. So it sounds like you guys have a general outline when you do it, but not a lot of planning goes into it. Does it ever feel like work, or you're just like it's something you look forward to? It. That's that was my biggest concern with Ben is I wanted something to help me get away from swimming, and yeah. that's why I wanted the podcast. That's why I rare I really don't talk about swimming on it. Yeah. I just wanted something that's I can talk and that's that's really what it is and there's general planning i mean i'll like chicken scratch my way some notes i've been thinking about through the week i like have a podcast folder but it doesn't feel like work and that's the biggest thing whenever it does it that's how we 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 make changes immediately i don't want this to feel like oh we have to record this wednesday like you know if it fits if it fits in the schedule either wednesday or thursday we'll record have a good time and then you know put it out there and hope people enjoy it yeah it's definitely like it's been one of those things where if it starts to feel like any semblance of a job or work, we both know it and we both like make it a point to just make yeah. an absolute silly goose episode. Like, yeah, that's what that kind of resets it. Like, I don't know. It's happened a few times that I feel like where um, we're like, dang it, like, what are we doing? And then, and then we, we do an episode like where we just mess around the whole time. And it's like, okay, like, we're back back to our roots yeah sometimes we just have to completely derail and i i think that's totally fine like step away is like because not everyone doesn't want to hear about oh here's how you can change your life some people just want to talk about like dumb stuff and we're here to offer that yeah no i love that i listen to you guys i love just the random banter ones um and i don't think like inspirations or like podcasts or anything need to be serious all, all, all the time i think it's really important to laugh and laugh a lot um And so Ben used to make me laugh all the time when we swam. That got me through practice. Um, Who are some of the funniest people in y'all's life and that you follow now? I mean, Ben. Ben is one of the funniest people. A lot. I steal a lot of jokes from Ben. Um, He's kind of the front front runner. I feel like of of uh, jokes. You are, man. I mean, I I steal. I steal a lot of Ben's. I steal a lot of Ben's content. like sayings and stuff like that my brother and then my dad it's crazy yeah, because your dad is. he's only gotten funnier with age like the jokes are only getting better and it's the same jokes but it's he's just really perfected them at age uh, how old was my dad 63 i was born on his 40th so he's uh, 63 and his jokes have only just it's like a fine wine they've just yeah. gotten so so good yeah so he definitely yeah, always keep you on your toes yeah so. they do he'll throw in a couple controversial ones too <laughs> yeah. so he'll, yeah. he'll get you going uh funny people in my life they're i'm trying to think i mean i grew up with um some of my friends from uh growing up in high school and stuff i still keep in touch with pretty regularly they always make me laugh um one of my teammates, Ben, who uh, I don't talk to as much anymore, but every time I do, I swear he makes me laugh. He's a, he's one of the funniest guys I've ever. Is this the guy that just got married? The one, no, Ben Lawless. Oh, Ben Lawless. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking uh, about. Who else? I mean, I, I like to listen to um, comedy podcasts, and I don't watch a lot of stand up anymore. But I mean, it's like if you're driving and like you want to laugh, that's like the best way to do it. Just like. I don't know, listen to... I've never done that. It's, dude, it's so... It's easy. great. If you have, like, hours of time, you're like, all right, I don't want to listen to the same eight songs that I've been listening to recently. It's, it'll get you. Dude, you know what I've noticed? Sorry, but have I always had this crease in my chin? <laughs> I, just, I think it's the camera. It's the camera. What is that? Shadows. Look, I even have one. Oh, hardly. Yeah. Okay. It looks Sorry. strong. It's a strong chin. You think so? That iron jaw. Yeah, it looks good. Fantastic. Um, all right, I got a question about adventure, and then we'll kind of wrap it up. Um, so that's kind of part of our Finder Summit. Uh, you guys went camping recently. Um, is this – well, first, how are the bug bites doing? Horrible. And Not actually, good. you know yeah, what? I, good. 
I don't know if this is a bad thing, but I, I keep getting more bites and they're not from mosquitoes. So I, I don't know what that means. I have check out your outside. bed. <laughs> like, I, don't, I check my bed. I don't think I have bed bugs or anything. Like, But, uh, oh, somebody said it's the lighting. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Ethan, something. Uh, long as, long yeah, as no, I, the bug bites are not doing great. Yeah. I'm just going to be honest. It's not good. Um, is camping something you guys do often? So we, we, that was our first time going as a group. I mean, I've, I've been with my family growing up and then getting, once we went to college, it was like kind of hard to Get stay away. on top of that. I mean, I've, yeah. I've been on trails and stuff, of course, but like the last time I've stayed outside in the woods, um, was that like my dad's property i don't really know i guess we have done that but that if we're excluding all the property runs we've done i mean he's on like it's on like 60 acres so you can get out in the woods and like you can be in there so if we're excluding all of those um this is the first time we've done it as like a collective group yeah um, and like to actually be in a place where you could die yeah like at the property you can just take the like bad boy up to the house and like grab like oh we like oh we forgot water let me go grab some like yeah, water water man so like I don't know this this is the first time we've had to really survive together as a as a group. Yeah. How'd that go? Uh, you know, what were your roles? Did everyone have individual like? Oh yeah, we had personas. I was kind of the the leader, I would say. Shut <laughs> up! Just leading the pack. <laughs> Shut up! Caleb uh, just kept was on his phone. Like, oh, I think we go here. I was like, just follow your heart. I was I was fighting off giant spiders and basically that's telling us where true. we could find the next water source to not die. So I was leading. Yeah. Caleb was leading. I was somewhere in the middle. And then Bailey was somewhere behind. Was Bailey been up? <laughs> Did Bailey even go with us? I don't remember. He just got really <laughs> hot knees all of a sudden. And that's the only thing I heard about the whole rest of the time. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I mean, Caleb was definitely the most the most uh, experienced of, of the group. So he kind of kind of led the pack. And uh, it, I mean, we wouldn't have had water to drink work for him. So. Wait, let me, let, me ex let me expose myself real quick. So my, my dad and my sister started hiking the Appalachian Trail four years ago. Um, so it was on my dad's bucket list and they're still hiking. Yeah, and they do it every year now. And so I got like really jealous because I couldn't do it. It never fit my swim schedule um, because when they go every year, I'm always tapering, like resting for either world champ trials or like a big, the biggest meet of like the year. So I have never been able to go with them. So I got jealous and like I bought all the gear. Like I have, I got like my pack, like a nice sleeping bag, like my little sleeping pad, uh, like little like inflatable pill. Like I had, Everything to hike the AT, but never like within sight, like a, a plan to actually go until um, this year with coronavirus, it worked out. So like, I was like, holy crap, I have all the gear. Like I can do this. So like a week before they left, I was like, guys, I can, I can go with you. So I had all the gear. And then once we went on the AT this year, um, I like, I knew what to do. So like kind of, not really the most experienced, but also am because I just listen to what like my dad, sister, and my brother did because they've done it for like five years. So, also don't if you're ever considering it, don't go camping or hiking in Central Florida. It's, it's a terrible. Oh my gosh, I I came, I went in so cocky. I was like, ah, I climbed like mountains. Oh my gosh, it was arguably harder because it was just so hot and the water was bad. The water was hot and tasted like. You were actually drinking an alligator in soil. Yeah, like it, like an, you lick an alligator. That's what it tastes it like. That gross. Where'd you go hike the AT recently? What part of it? We did um, Tennessee, and I think part of North Carolina. If those states are even like close to each other, yeah. I think yeah. Um, we did the uh, the Smokies and the Rockies. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, was this something you just did because of like quarantine and you had the break to be able to do it? Or was it like you were going to do it no matter what this year? Oh, well, if I had a meet, I, I wouldn't have been able to. I, yeah. I can't go in the woods for a week and lose weight and like be out of the water. That's the biggest yeah. thing. I can't be out of the water, but I want to do it 
again, me and Ben are already planning trips to do the um, the approach trail. Um, and so we'll fly into Atlanta and then do the approach trail. So we'll see if we can find time. But I don't have a meet this year. It's fantastic how much I can freaking do without swimming. Love swimming, but like, <laughs> frick, frick guy. But, <laughs> I ruined your life a little bit. Um, solo hiking for long periods of time uh, is certainly one of the most like incredibly introspective experiences you could have. What you? What's one thing you learned on your time on the trail? Ben knows every single yeah. thing about my life. Every thought. <laughs> every he knows everything. How he talks about it on the podcast. Yeah, that's but, how I know. I don't know. It was weird. Bailey, we talked about this in one of our podcasts, but Bailey was like, "Yeah, like walking really isn't that much fun." I was like, "What?" He's like, "If you think about it, it's like, what are we doing? Like, we're walking. It's hot. Like, this isn't really that much fun." But I think it's the experience as a whole, um, just you know, being with good. Com oh, Jane, here's my dog. Hey, doggo. What's up? Uh, Jane, Jane actually went with us too. But it's just the experience of. Dog. I feel like that's something that's just written written into us instinctually, just being out in the woods, and it offers something totally different, a total step back from society where you're not worried about making the next meeting, you're worried about where's the next water source, so it really takes you way back to, you know, primitive times, even though, yeah. you know, you might have, like, a legit pack, or you do have water filters, but it offers something that you don't get when you're sitting inside an AC, so it's, it's really, really fun, and it's a good time with good company, there's nothing better. Get out there. All right, last question I have before we do some rapid fire questions to end. What's the wildest, most unbelievable, slash most memorable, however you want to take that, experience you guys have had together? Um, that's a good question. Um, I don't know, wildest? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know if there's one specific. I know this is going to be, it's probably going to sound so lame. There's not one specific thing. It's just an accumulation yeah. of all the pennies we've dropped in of like wild things we've done. Um, it's just accumulation. I mean, it's, it's just been a really good time with Ben. I don't think there's one thing that I can say, oh, like, that's it. They've all offered, all, every, every time I've had with Ben, they just think of something. It's I mean, offered something different. That's the way I see it. I don't think there's one. I Maybe the cruises. If you looked at any given like month, there was probably at least one thing that we could do and say like that was kind of insane. Yeah. Like, recently we had spray painting the car. I was gonna say we, yeah. we we spray painted and then destroyed kind of a car. Yeah. We um, bought a like a car, a, like a junk car, and then spray painted it and drew some swords on it and put like a unicorn like thing on the front. That was like pretty recent. Cool. It was a Pegasus, but whatever. It was a Pegasus. My bad. Oh, dang it. This was yeah. just like a quarantine activity that you guys decided to go out and do. Awesome. Yeah, they I, I've sick. had this dream of getting a car and not being bound by the rules of the road and just being able to run into stuff. And that was like such a cool thing that I wanted to do. And then he got a car that is stick shift, which I don't even pretend to know how to drive. So <laughs> I drove it like one time and didn't achieve any of my goals that so yeah, that was pretty fun we've been on some cruises together which is always always a great That's time. story emerging from that yeah yeah i i'm trying to keep it as appropriate as i can um but <laughs> i mean i really anything the car was probably the most one time we took shots of olive oil oh my i, I don't know if that's that sounds terrible. Don't, it, that, that is actually up there. Don't ever take yeah, a shot of water. considering doing that. It's worse than alcohol. It burns worse than alcohol. <laughs> don't take shots of olive oil. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm like going to go home and like consider doing this this afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Try to take one out. I don't um, know. I think that's the key to friend, like a solid friendship, though, is just having like this like series of like small, awesome experiences together and just like clicking, staying grounded. I got um, to, wait, let me, share, let me share one more quote because you, you yeah. brought it up from Step Hit Brothers. Me with it. It's from the Step Brothers movie. It was uh, Don't Lose Your Dinosaur. And that's something I don't ever want to do is just that youthfulness. It's yeah. a fantastic quote. So you can never lose your dinosaur. Me and Ben won't ever lose it. You got to, you guys, you got to always do some dumb stuff. Nothing bad. Nothing bad. Yeah. Nothing you yeah. you got to do some dumb stuff. Hey, uh, what's your. As a quote guy, what's your go-to quote that you, like, tell kids when kids come up to you at swim meets and are like, Caleb Russell, like, oh, it's exciting oh. to meet you. Do you have something? Oh, my gosh. I, I mean, not, 
they all they only I can never bring them up on the top of my head. It has to fit this scenario. So yeah. I have a whole book. I carry a quote book with me. Um, I actually started it in high school, but it just depends on the scenario. And honestly, I have a bad memory. And so like someone will bring up something. I'm like, oh, that quote matches that. So cool. I much know. Wow. Okay. Rapid fire questions. I'm going to hit you guys with a bunch of just like random questions that tap on things that you wouldn't necessarily get in normal conversation. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, first one, as a coffee shop, as a person who sells coffee, you got to ask, how do you guys drink your coffee? Black. Nice. With us. Look, I'm not. Go, 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 go. No, listen, I have to explain <laughs> this. I, I stick very strictly to the splash and dash method, all right? I do a splash okay, of cream, a dash of sugar. Two, and that's me. And then two pumps of vanilla, two pumps caramel. Yeah. With <laughs> cream on top. Half, half. But yeah, splash and dash, that's me. Splash and I don't, dash. I just like the taste of coffee, I guess. I don't know. Or maybe, maybe I'm just too lazy to put anything in it, but just black, I guess. I've always been the same way. I only drink it black. Um, you guys, all right. So if you guys got a reality show about your friendship, right, in your life, what would it be called? Bad Boys. Yeah, Bad Boys only, I would say. Bad, yeah, probably Bad Boys. BBL for, for sure. <laughs> has, has there been some pre-discussion about this? Is this something you guys, like, thought through? No, you said rapid fire. That's, yeah, that okay. was our trying to get rapid. On it. We're, the we're, we're, them, we're them bad boys. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Um, what's a conspiracy theory that you actually sort of- Oh! oh you should not have asked this. Whoa! <laughs> oh, I, I really don't know if I should say anything, because I think every sponsor I have will drop me. A conspiracy theory that I actually have? Oh. Well, everyone knows that UFOs are real, so I'm of not going to get into it. Of course, uh. Whatever he it. says, I promise you I'll take the opposite standpoint. I mean- <laughs> Did you listen to the dolphin episode on our podcast? Yes, dolphins. Okay, dolphins. That's art. That's an art. That you can argue that. That's not even conspiracy theory. That's just a real theory. Okay. I would say it's probably something about the universe. Okay, something. It's not really conspiracy theory, but now I just have to say it. Now that you got me on this, dark matter and dark energy. It makes up ninety-five percent of the universe's mass, I believe. And scientists don't know what it is. You can, make, you, can make, you can make so many conspiracy theories out of what the heck it is. And no one can prove you wrong because no one knows, scientists don't know what it is. They just, they just know it's something because it emits gravity and that's about it. So that, that blows my mind. That's a big one. Yeah. Pretty I much just, all science. I disagree with everything you just said. Just I know. know that. Ben, I'm a conspiracy theorist and Ben's a... Um, uh, what do you call it? A, a, skept, a skeptic. Just a I was going to say, Ben's the realist here. Doesn't believe it without No, him. he's boring. That's what he is. Yeah. <laughs> Fine, if you want to call me boring. Smart. Stay imaginative. Um, Watch how fast I right. answer. Fill in the blank. Happiness is? Excellence. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, this is a good... Happiness. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on. No, I got this. Happiness is taking, you know the answer to this. We've been over this. Happiness is when you can do, when you can take a two hour car drive by yourself, not listen to music and be completely content and tranquil in your own mind and thoughts. That's what I think happiness is. I love that actually. I ask this to people every week and that's one of my favorites I've heard so far. Dude, I'm sticking with that. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it short and sweet. Um, okay. Fire. This question produces interesting answers. What is currently on your bedside table? Chapstick and water. Yeah, water, uh, a framed picture of me, of Caleb, and uh, a speaker that I've used probably four times. <laughs> <laughs> Only four times. How long have you had this speaker? Two and a half years. Next question. Okay, oh, wait, I have two layers. I have, I have my Bible, a chapstick, a charger, a thing of water, and then below I have a noisemaker. Oh, I have a layer. I have a noisemaker. I need that noisemaker. I can't sleep without it. I have a, another layer, but there's I couldn't even tell you how much stuff is on there. Action. Books. The Mentos. A pack of Mentos. I would say. <laughs> I read, yeah, Mentos <laughs> and Mentos. I don't know. It's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Sweet. Glasses. Two pairs of glasses. Do you even wear? 
Yeah. Yeah. Huh. All right. Beach or the mountains? Fresh. Florida, Florida. Oh. Either or. Beach or the mountains? Oh, uh, that's like hard. I have to pick one or the other. I'll go yeah. beach. Beach, yeah, beach. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're spoiled here. I'm tempted to say mountains because we spend so much time around that stuff here. So it's like, whereas when I lived in Virginia, I was like, dang, I love the beach. So it's like, I don't know. I live in Florida and I still say the beach, yeah. I was going to say, Ben, we grew up in the mountains and I still would vote mountains on this every time. Really? Yeah, you, I don't you, know. Vote, you vote mountains? Oh, of course. I think, but I, 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 like, me, I like to hike and I like to camp and I just like to be in the mountains. Yeah. Yeah, dang it! I, I, it. I no, I'm leaving mine. I just really I like water. I mean, in Florida, it's yeah. freaking hot all the time. It's nice to have water, but when I do see mountains now, they're that much more beautiful because I don't ever get to see them. That's true. Yeah, yeah, that's an exciting thing. I guess that's true. When I go to the beach now, I'm like hype about it because yeah, you know, it's, it's not so there weird. Like when I go back to uh, to Roanoke, I I like the first thing I notice is the mountains driving in. I'm like, dang, this is so cool. Yeah. And I always, I like didn't think about it when I lived there, but it is really yeah. cool. Cool. All right. A couple more questions. Uh, what would your superpower be? Oh, uh, we went, we've been over this frick. It's um the stretch, stretchy. Stretchy? Like, um, stretch? like Elastigirl? Incredible. Elastigirl, yeah. Because yeah. she can technically fly. She can like parachute down. She can do everything. Yeah, stretch. Um, all the things you would stretch. Yes, <laughs> can she stretch forever, right? You can literally, if you have. One, just grab on and slingshot. Right. Like I'm going to hit you with one that actually is cool, and that would be to teleport because. That's stupid. Is that a, is, would you consider that a superpower? Yes, that that's mine. Person? Teleportation would be my superpower for 100%. sure. 100%. I could just stretch my arm out and teleport anywhere in the world. Yeah, it would take you eight years. No, it wasn't. How? Okay. Stretching your arm. Okay, I'll, then I'll add on to mine. Sh stretching, but my arm can go a million miles an hour. That's how fast I can stretch out. So that, I guess that wins. <laughs> That's not mine. All right. Um, hit me with your best trivia fact. Oh, wow. Oh, I, do you best do I, dare I talk about the universe again? Me with a trivia fact. I mean, I, I've already talked. Okay, here's one. So the universe, they originally thought that it was expanding slower and slower since the beginning of time, whether you want to call it Big Bang, whatever you call it. But since that, they thought it was expand or like slowing down the expansion, but it's actually speeding up. So it's going faster and faster and faster, like every every second into in expanding into nothing, which you can't even fathom. It's hard to comprehend. It is. I mean, the only thing I can think of right now is that uh, raisins are just dry grapes. But that's that's <laughs> literally the only thing coming from coming to my mind. That dude, I don't think a lot of people know that. Yeah, it's pretty unique. Are you sure? Okay. I don't think it's pretty there, unique. And then I'll be Ben. Oh, I don't believe that because I'm a, a skeptic. Well, I'm yeah, skeptic. you're entitled to believe yeah. that. Whatever you want. Be true statement. All right. Final question, words to live by, and then we'll wrap up. I know you have one already. I was going to say, which one? Quotes guy. I just know that you're the quote guy. I mean, I, I'm just saying something to live by. It's, it's, you want to live by what your, your, your purpose is. I mean, I believe people are all, are all capable of doing something great. Again, whatever that is, I don't, I don't care what it is. I, I just, there's the three rules. I, I'm going to say them again because I think it's very, very important. Find what you enjoy. Actually, my original definition was find what you enjoy, be good at it, and then try to be the best in the world. But Ben actually helped me change the definition because I don't even want you, you don't even have to be good at something to start. As long as you enjoy it and have the drive to actually get better and improve and invest in that craft or become obsessed with it, as I say, yeah. then that's when you try to be the best, the, the best in the world at it. So that's, that's, I think, the most important thing to live by. I think that from that sparks success happiness and then sharing that sharing that knowledge and that platform and you know helping other people reach what they're supposed to be doing i think that's the biggest thing with my platform is sharing those three rules yeah. and then telling people that they're capable of doing something great i don't want everyone to be a professional swimmer i don't want everyone to you know be on the podium or whatever um with regarding swimming like i don't want everyone to swim I, that would be the most boring 
stupidest world ever. You know, whatever you're meant to yeah. be doing, go out and do that and try to be great at it and just enjoy it. So I think, I think that's it. Uh, that's horrible. Mine would be, uh, <laughs> I, like I said, not a big quote guy, but one of the things that I do remember as a quote is, um, if you don't know what to do, um, get vertical. Oh, yeah, so that's, that was, that's yeah. one that's like, that I always think about because a lot of times you don't know what to do or you're just not feeling like doing anything. You're probably laying down or sitting down or something. So it's like, you know, I always think about, um, you move your feet and your mind will follow. Um, and that's, that's something I, I think is impactful for everybody. I mean, no matter what you're doing, like he said, um, you know, get moving and your brain will follow. So I don't know. The only, the only two things we control in our lives are our thoughts and our choices. I think that's a very important concept to grasp. Yeah, life throws a lot of obstacles. You got to just like get out there and do it. What's the, um, share that quote from your principal. That, this is the greatest quote of make, all time. Make it a great day or not, the choice is yours. That's, I mean, it's so it. good. It's so good because you can argue, oh, like there's Corona going around. No, make it a great day or yeah. not, the choice is yours. I love that. That's a good mentality to have. All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in with me. This has been awesome. Um, yeah, it was good to, good to chat. Thanks, Olivia. It was good to, yeah. uh, good to catch up. Yeah. All right. And then reminder, next week we're with Bart Landis with Catawba Lands Conservancy. He's awesome. Yeah. All right. Bye, guys. All right. Bye, Olivia. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.